While the polls have tightened somewhat over the past six months or so, and Democrats now look likely to keep the Senate at this year's midterms, Republicans have held a steady lead when it comes to House projections. As things stand, 538 gives them a roughly 2 in 3 chance of winning a majority in the House of Representatives. And it's worth saying that, since the 1980s, only George W. Bush has kept the House during the midterms. So, in this video, we're going to look at why a Republican House looks likely, what it might do, and how it'll affect Biden's plans going into his third year. As you may have seen in our recent video, the US channel really needs your support. So make sure you subscribe, like, comment and share to give this channel a chance of surviving into the new year. So before we get into what a Republican House would do, let's take a quick look at the polling. As we mentioned a second ago, the party that controls the White House almost always loses the House at the midterms. This year looks to be no different. While Democrats are definitely more popular than they were a few months ago, in July, for example, 538 gave Biden and the Democrats just a 12% chance of keeping the House. Republicans are still favoured to win it. There are also reasons to expect that things are only going to get worse for the incumbent Biden administration in the next couple of weeks. First, the decision made by OPEC this week to cut global oil production by up to 2 million barrels per day will probably mean higher oil prices, which never goes down well with the American electorate. Second, while inflation has cooled a bit, it's still running pretty hot. And unlike in Europe, wages are rising at nearly the same price. Year-on-year -year inflation is currently at about 8%, while year-on-year -year wage increases are at about 7%. This mutual increase of prices and wages opens up the possibility of a so-called wage price spiral, which is when wages rise to meet inflation, which in turn pushes up inflation, which means higher wages, etc., creating a dangerous feedback loop which can result in very high levels of inflation and destabilise the economy. To cool down the economy and bring down inflation, the Federal Reserve will probably raise interest rates even higher. While this makes sense, rising interest rates mean higher mortgage payments and carry the risk of recession, which won't be popular with the American electorate. Now, to be clear, we're not saying that Democrats will definitely see a drop in polling over the next few weeks, just that the macroeconomic winds are against them. It's very possible that Biden and co can offset these challenges by implementing popular policies, like, say, pardoning all federal convictions of simple marijuana possession but we're just saying that things could be difficult. Anyway, if, as expected, the Republicans win the House, what will they actually do with it? Well, the first thing to expect is an internal battle over who takes the speakership. As things stand, Kevin McCarthy is the frontrunner for the House speakership. However, the so-called Freedom Caucus, a group of roughly 35-member hyper-conservative House Republicans who are generally pretty supporter of Trump, have made it clear that they won't support McCarthy's bid unless the Republican establishment leadership makes certain concessions, including granting them power to force a speakership eviction vote, what's known as the motion to vacate the chair. This motion is an antiquated congressional procedure that hasn't been used in over a hundred years, which allows any member of the House to call a vote on the House Speakership. It came to prominence in 2015 after Republican Mark Meadows filed a resolution declaring then-Speaker John Boehner's tenure to be vacant, but it was never voted on. The Freedom Caucus essentially wants McCarthy to guarantee that, if they file a resolution, it would be voted on. While this might not sound consequential, it would drastically change the balance of power in the House, which is why previous speakers have resisted it. The next thing to expect would be a series of investigations to put political pressure on the Biden administration. Significant numbers of House Republicans have already made it clear that they'll be staging investigations into Hunter Biden's foreign dealings and America's botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. But there's also been some talk of further investigations into the FBI for their raid of Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. Even if they don't actually investigate the FBI, it's a safe bet to assume that a Republican House will try its best to protect Trump, possibly by refocusing away from Trump onto the shortcomings by the Capitol Police. There's even been talk amongst some GOP House members of trying to impeach not just Biden, 
but, well, basically everyone, including the Attorney General, the Homeland Security Secretary, and the Education Secretary, as a sort of payback for Democrats' impeachment of Trump. Now, these probably won't actually happen, because there's unlikely to be a majority in favour of all these, frankly, baseless impeachments. More moderate House Republicans have already implied they wouldn't vote for these sorts of impeachments. And Republicans are only on track for a narrow majority if they do win. Nonetheless, the fact that House Republicans are even talking about it gives you a sense of the sort of tone they're going to take if they win in November. Once they've got their investigations and impeachment sorted, the next big event in the calendar will be the debt ceiling. For those of you who don't know, the US has a legal limit for the total amount of outstanding US federal debt, known as the debt ceiling. Obviously, because the US government usually runs a deficit, every couple of years they have to raise the debt ceiling, and this has to be approved by a majority in the House. Failure to raise the debt ceiling would ultimately result in a sovereign default, leaving the US unable to service its debts. Now, for most of modern history, raising the debt ceiling was essentially treated by both parties as a constitutional formality. But in the last 10 years or so, House Republicans have become increasingly willing to leverage the threat of a sovereign default to extract concessions from Democrats. The first real scare came in the summer of 2011, when House Republicans refused to vote to raise the debt ceiling unless Obama slashed medical spending and taxes. An agreement was only eventually reached on July the 31st, but only after the Treasury had to resort to a so-called extraordinary measures to stave off a sovereign default. In the aftermath of the crisis, both Standard & Poor's and China's Dangong Rating Agency downgraded the United States credit rating, despite the fact the US Treasuries have traditionally been considered the safest asset in all of finance. A similar thing happened in 2013, and the Treasury actually had to put 850,000 federal employees on temporary unpaid leave to avoid a default. Worryingly for anyone who wants to avoid a sovereign default, which should include basically every American, Republicans refused to vote for an increase to the debt ceiling last year, and if they win a majority in the House, we can expect them to put up a fight when Biden next tries to raise the debt ceiling, which is due by early 2023. So that's what to expect from a Republican House next year. Make sure you subscribe, comment and like. The US channel has really been struggling recently, so this would really help it survive into next year. But that's not all that's happening around the world. In fact, this weekend there was a major election in Brazil, as well as Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria and Latvia. We don't have time to cover them all in separate videos, but we did put together an election special over on the Daily Briefing. So if you want to catch up on what happened, then the link to that is in the description. You should subscribe to that channel too, because while we don't always do election specials every day, we do update you on the biggest news stories and ensure you never miss anything from around the world. Or listen through your favourite podcast app, and never feel left behind by the news cycle again.